Have you ever pondered the role of luck in your actions? Some time ago we asked in the community tab, how strong are your morals? You'll be amazed to know how devilish of a person you are. You know there is something called Lucifer effect. If you get immense power, doesn't matter how strong your morals are, you'll be pretty bad, at least to many peoples. You know, we peoples already are bad. Everyone is villain in someone's story, and powers just increase it by many fold. So, this was the intro. Let's start the main video. Chapter 1. The Awakening Imagine waking up with no memory of who you are or where you came from. Your body is a hazy, translucent outline in an endless white space. In front of you is a screen with an icon that reads Build Your World. Begin here. You press it, revealing a list of features, descriptions, and rules for creating a society. As you read through the options, you realize you have the power to decide how the world will work, laws, rights, and the distribution of wealth and resources. However, there's a catch. You don't know who you will be in this world. You could be of any race, gender, ability, or socioeconomic status. This uncertainty drives you to create a world that is fair and just for everyone, ensuring that no matter who you become, you will have a fair shot at a good life. This scenario echoes the thought experiment known as the Veil of Ignorance, formulated by philosopher John Rawls in his book A Theory of Justice. Rawls proposed that to create a fair society, one must design it without knowing their place within it. This perspective encourages impartiality and equality, while the veil of ignorance offers a powerful ideal for fairness. It also highlights the difficulty of achieving true impartiality in the real world. Our decisions are invariably shaped by our personal experiences and biases. Thus, the challenge of defining and implementing fairness remains a central philosophical problem. Chapter 2 the problem of fairness. The veil of ignorance thought experiment highlights a critical issue, the problem of fairness. Ideally, fairness means treating everyone equally, regardless of their background or circumstances. In reality, achieving such equity is complex and fraught with challenges. Fairness often clashes with inherent human biases and self-interest. Decisions are shaped by personal experiences and cultural backgrounds, leading to partiality and inequality. For instance, people from privileged backgrounds might not fully understand the struggles of marginalized communities, resulting in policies that favor the former. This can trigger cognitive biases like group favoritism, where people prefer those similar to themselves, and confirmation bias, where individuals seek information that confirms their preconception. The diverse needs and preferences of individuals add another layer of complexity. What seems fair to one person might be unjust to another. For example, policies promoting equal access to education must consider different learning styles and needs to truly be fair. Power dynamics also play a significant role. Those in power shape societal rules and norms, often perpetuating inequality. Ensuring fairness requires including diverse voices and perspectives in decision-making processes. Psychological studies, such as those on implicit bias, reveal that subconscious preferences can affect our judgment and behavior, making true fairness difficult to achieve. Striving for fairness involves acknowledging these biases and working to mitigate their effects. Despite these challenges, fairness is essential. It requires empathy, understanding, and commitment to equality. By continually quality questioning and revising our rules and systems, we can take steps toward a fairer society, even if perfect fairness remains elusive. Just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video, Please consider like and subscribe, and thanks a lot if you did already. Moving on. Chapter 3. The Role of Luck in Life Beyond Fairness, the veil of ignorance introduces the concept of luck in shaping our lives. We don't choose the circumstances we're born into, our race, gender, 
socioeconomic status, or abilities, these factors, largely determined by luck, profoundly influence our opportunities and challenges. Philosophers call this moral luck, a term first introduced by Bernard Williams and later expanded by Thomas Nagel. Moral luck refers to situations where individuals are judged morally for actions influenced by factors beyond their control. Nagel identified four types of moral luck, resultant, circumstantial, constitutive, and causal. Resultant moral luck occurs when individuals are judged by the outcomes of their actions, which can be significantly affected by chance. For instance, two people might commit similar acts, but one faces harsher consequences due to unforeseeable results. Circumstantial moral luck involves being in the right or wrong place at the right or wrong time, affecting one's ability to act morally. Constitutive moral luck relates to one's inherent traits and dispositions shaped by genetics and upbringing. Finally, causal moral luck addresses the broader chain of events that lead to one's actions. The problem of moral luck challenges the notion of individual moral responsibility. If our actions are significantly influenced by factors beyond our control, can we truly be held accountable? This question triggers cognitive dissonance as we struggle to reconcile our belief in free will with the reality of luck's influence. Addressing moral luck involves recognizing the role of luck in our lives and cultivating compassion for other circumstances. By understanding that many aspects of our lives are shaped by chance, we can foster a more empathetic and just society. This perspective encourages us to support policies and practices that mitigate the impact of luck, such as social safety nets and equal opportunity initiatives. Chapter 4. The Challenge. The problem of moral knowledge is another critical issue raised by the veil of ignorance. It questions the basis of our moral principles and whether there is an objective foundation for morality. This issue is rooted in the classic philosophical problem known as the ease, ought problem, introduced by Scottish philosopher David Hume in the 18th century. That is, ought problem arises when we try to derive ethical statements, how the world ought to be, from factual statements, how the world is. Hume argued that facts alone cannot dictate moral values without an underlying ethical assumption. This brings into question the objectivity of moral principles and suggests that our moral judgments are influenced by subjective interpretations. Morality is often derived from three main sources, spiritual or religious doctrines, emotional responses, and science and reason. Each of these methods, however, relies on assumptions or subjective viewpoints. For example, religious doctrines require the belief in the truth of the religion itself. Emotional responses are inherently subjective and even scientific approaches, like those proposed by philosopher Sam Harris, rest on the assumption that we should maximize well-being. This subjective nature of moral principles can trigger cognitive biases such as moral relativism, where people believe that morality is relative to cultural or personal perspectives, and moral absolutism, where individuals hold that certain moral principles are universally applicable regardless of context. Psychological studies on moral reasoning, like those by Jonathan Hyde, reveal that people often use intuition and emotions to make moral judgments and then rationalize their decisions post hoc. This suggests that our moral knowledge is not purely rational, but deeply intertwined with our psychological makeup. Understanding the challenge of moral knowledge encourages us to approach morality with humility and openness. By recognizing the subjective foundations of our moral principles, we can engage in more meaningful dialogues about ethics and work towards a more inclusive and understanding society. This approach fosters a culture of continuous moral reflection and growth, acknowledging the complexity and diversity of human moral experience. 
Chapter 5, Compassion as a Path Forward. In light of the complexities surrounding fairness, luck, and moral knowledge, one principle stands out as a guiding light, compassion. Recognizing the profound influence of luck on our lives and the subjective nature of our moral judgments calls for a compassionate approach toward others and ourselves. Compassion involves understanding and empathizing with other circumstances, acknowledging that many factors shaping their actions and experiences are beyond their control. This perspective can reduce harsh judgments and foster a more supportive and inclusive society. By embracing compassion, we can bridge the gaps created by biases and differing moral viewpoints, working together towards common goals. Psychological studies support the benefits of compassion. Research shows that compassionate individuals tend to have better mental health stronger relationships, and greater overall well-being. Cultivating compassion can also lead to more pro-social behaviors, such as helping others and advocating for social justice. Moreover, compassion can counteract cognitive biases, like the fundamental attribution error, where we attribute others' actions to their character while overlooking situational factors. By considering the broader context of people's lives, we can make more balanced and fair assessments. Implementing compassion in society involves creating systems and policies that reflect empathy and understanding. This might include social safety nets, access to health care and education, and measures to address systemic inequalities. Compassionate policies aim to uplift everyone, especially the most vulnerable, ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to thrive. Ultimately, Compassion reminds us that, despite our differences, we share a common humanity. It encourages us to act with kindness, fairness, and a commitment to justice. While we may never achieve perfect fairness or moral certainty, a compassionate approach can guide us in creating a better world for all. In the words of the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, Boundless compassion for all living beings is the surest and most certain guarantee of pure moral conduct. By grounding our actions in compassion, we can navigate the challenges of fairness, luck, and morality with greater wisdom and empathy, fostering a more just and harmonious society. This is the end of this video. We believe you enjoyed it. Now pause and comment down your thoughts as we really want to hear from you. It gives us motivation. After done commenting, watch my next video appearing right of your screen that we think best for you. Peace.